Welcome to a special edition of Carper County Outdoors. I'm Dwayne Kohler and we are talking deer head trophies today. So over my shoulder, Landon Beck got a beautiful buck this year and it's already back from the taxidermist and it's on the wall. Um, most folks, they love to get one mounted on the wall like that from the taxidermist and, and um, that's, an, that's, a, that's an awesome buck here. Um, back on the show, oh, it's probably been 10 years ago or so, we did, and I don't remember if it was actually this one or if it was a different one, but um, I've done, oh boy, something like 20 of these mounts over the years. And basically you take the deer, once you get the skull, and you cut right above the eyes, and then you cut right behind the antlers, and then you make a little wooden plaque, and then st pull some, put some velvet over it, um, and then mount it on a piece of plaque. And this was a fun piece of wood that came from a friend's walnut tree. And so, anyways, so this, this I, I think I have maybe like five of these hanging up. I've been deer hunting for many, many years, and I think I've gotten nine over the years. And this one was probably 10 years ago or something like that when I got this one. Um, and it wasn't like the super, super one, but it's, so if it wasn't like like that one that I was going to take to the taxidermist, it's like but I still want to hang it on the wall. So so again, you know, you, you cut this, you cut into the skull, and then you you take um, gorilla glue and you glue that to a piece of you know a, a semicircle piece, and then you make another circled piece behind and glue them. And like I said, like I said, we did that on the show something like ten years ago. Okay. So again, I had one little corner of the wall all filled up with those, and I was like, we gotta come up with some other thing. And then a few years ago, I got this deer, and I'd seen some friends that, had, that were doing skull mounts. And um, so I brought this one, I brought this one home, um, and I buried it in the compost pile and left it in there for several months. Um, and then the worms and the bugs and, and just being in the moisture and all that kind of stuff softened up the tissue and I was able to easily scrape it off and then power washing and scraping and power washing and scrape. And then I, I used black, black acrylic spray paint. Um, you, you, first you, you put a, a nice piece of uh, uh, masking tape around the base of each antler so you don't get the, you don't get the uh, um, antlers messed up because you really that's, that's really the part that everybody likes to see but then I did it with a black base and then I took some um, a bronze colored acrylic paint and then just dabbed it on and so when you get like around the teeth or around the it, you know it kind of gives you a dark and light and you know so I was really I was really tickled with that and so I've been wanting to do that for the show um, here for a while and I didn't come up with a buck this year unfortunately but some friends were out shed hunting and they found this one, and I, I'm pretty sure it got hit by a car, as, a, as opposed to getting harvested, because this was months after, after hunting season was over with. Um, so how did we get it to this point? So that's the, topic, that's the topic of the show today. So let me tell you a couple tips first. When you go to um, um, get the, the soft tissue off initially, the skin, the meat, the tendons, and all that kind, all that kind of stuff, um, wear some gloves. I forgot to wear gloves and you'll see in the video. Um, and I had, I think I had to wash my hands 20 times to get the smell off my hands because it's kind of smelly at first. Um, but this one, I think got hit by a car and was, was picked up, like I said, from some friends were out shed hunting. Um, but this is an awesome rack. Um, oh, I want to show you something else too on this one. When you want, if you want to, if you want to have this um, mounted on the wall, you need to do one thing. This little spot Right here, there's a kind of a smooth spot um, back kind of like where the neck attaches to the head here. Um, there's a hard po point there. And so these little hooks you can get at the hardware store. So take the take the take your, your drill out and measure the, the size of the drill bit, the same size of the screw, and just go maybe one little drill bit smaller. And then, so then that'll hang on the wall. So that, so that hangs on the wall at my house. It's been hanging there for a while. And um, um, so, Th this one, um, we were gonna, I was going to do the painting today, but the, uh, but the new owner decided he wants to get a, a decal, and it's going to be like, I think, like an American flag. Um, and so those kind of things are available, so it's like you have to look, look those things up. But the, the, there's a, um, I, I really like the painting. If you, you could do gold, you could do silver, you could do copper, you could do bronze, you know, or, or something else like that. Um, and then the decals, that's another option. You can get a camo decal, you can get a Pittsburgh Steelers decal, you can get an American flag decal. Um, so that's, that's the new thing that, that's kind of out there. So that's, that's where I believe this one's gonna go. But um, let me show you how we got it to this point. Joining us now, Vince Stranga. Vince, welcome to welcome to Crawford County Outdoors. <laughs> so shed hunting was something that you guys were interested in at your house. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so my, my older son, he's 11. Uh, we've been doing it now for a couple years. Um, kind of stumbled across a shed on accident last year, and he was like, you know, kind of doing more, 
you know, research, asking more questions like, is this a, this is a thing? Like you can walk around the woods and find these. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, every year they drop. So um, ever since then he was hooked and, and now I can't keep him out of the woods and I don't try either. I, I just, I never turn him down. Uh, he just can't get enough of it. We, we can go out for four or five hours and never find anything. And then, um, you know, our best hunt yet was um, in two hours we found five. Wow. So wow. we put some miles on. It's now, fun. Now, I, I, brought, I brought some ancient experience related to shed hunting here along. This is more typically what I've come up with, mm -hmm. just these little, these little things like this from a one-year-old, right, well, or a year I and a half old or whatever. That's a, that's a, a good find. It's I mean, fine. Got little nubs, <laughs> got little nubs on. And what typically happens with these ones is the dogs take these and play right. with them and chew on them, and mm -hmm. then eventually after a little while they're gone. One, one time, when my dog was little, I was out to the hunting preserve and found this one. So that's actually kind of a cool one. I right. don't know. What do you, what do you think of that one? I, I have more respect for those ones. <laughs> I mean, because I tell them, I was like, when, when we're out there, I mean, I feel like if, if we were to give uh, an award or, or something, it should go to the smallest shed you find because those are the hardest. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, the kind of like the concept, aim small, miss small, um, you know, <laughs> look for the small ones and, and these ones will really stick out. You know what I mean? So, cause a lot of times I think I you, tripped over that when I was going yeah. through it, it was like, Oh gee, look at that. <laughs> and I told him, I was like, you might just see a tip of the tine sticking out or it, you know, it could be down and, you know, covered in some grass. And, um, I even found him. I, I caught my one, my son training his eye just, you know, he did it naturally and on his own, he found a shed and he just threw it out ahead of him and wow. kind of wow. was training his eye. Like I said, you know, just to kind of see what it looks like to kind of get used to what it looks like laying on the, on the ground. I kept hoping I would find another one like that. So could I, I could use those for some, some rattling, you know, and maybe trying to track them during, you know, during the, the rut season or whatever. I, that's it. That's the only big one I've ever found. All the rest of them have been these, you know, these, these little ones like, right. like you're talking about there. And probably we, we've in two years, we've, we're up to, double digits, you know, like I'm talking 10 to 15 and we've never found a match yet. So once we get on one, he does not leave that area till he does a, a, <laughs> a, a, a concentrated grid and, you know, he's real methodical about, you know, trying to find that other one, but we've never had any luck. So while you're shed hunting, you came up with something else this time around. He did. My, okay. my son Santino, okay. uh, that was all him. I was at the barber shop and he calls me, FaceTimes me and he's like, dad, look what I found. And he's FaceTime me. And first I see bones of a, a, a deer's leg, it's rib cage, it's spine. And then he gets to the head and it's a buck that had, you know, was dead in the woods. And it's just this gigantic rack. Tremendous rack. Biggest rack. Of, yeah. Oh, I mean, tremendous. And just as he gets to the head and I'm like shocked and the phone goes dead. It, it cuts <laughs> out. Uh, his battery died. Oh no! <laughs> so, and he was out in the woods with a, a, a friend of his, and they were just they were shed hunting. Um, but uh, I I got home from the barber shop and pulled in the driveway, and he's running home. Out, he's just coming out of the woods beside our house, holding the whole entire wow. uh, the the skull with the horns on it, the, the antlers. So uh, it was, and it had been dead for a while. Uh, there was nothing left um, uh, other than. I think the the actual skull had the most as far as um, f uh, fur goes, but the rest of it was completely decayed. When I had um, I had done one myself here, I actually did a couple over over the years trying to figure out if this is a good way to make a nice mount to hang on the mm -hmm. wall, and I uh, I took and and brought the brought the head, you know, cut the cut the meat, you know, and I was doing all that kind of stuff, and I stuck the head in my compost pile. And I just left it there for like three months. Right. And there's where the you know where the leaves are, where I pile all, all the leaves, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of at the end of fall season. Mm -hmm. And I waited till kind of like in the winter, you know, and and, and uh, it was very much like the one that that, that you had there. Mm -hmm. um, the the tissue was kind of like all kind of shrinking down, mm -hmm. and you know it was kind of open that down to the bone in some spots or whatever. And it scraped off relatively easily, but you still got there's, there's still a good bit of work to, you know mm -hmm. to, to do to get Absolutely. that to get that thing cleaned up. So um, yours, like I said, that, that rack was just awesome. Yeah, That's right. just an amazing thing. You know, it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, whether it was shot or hit by a car or the disease got it, you know, that someone, you know, was not able to harvest that thing. I'm guessing that thing was like maybe a four-year-old, five-year-old, something yeah. like that. It was, um, def it was definitely a big rack. And it, it, there's some guesses out there as far as the measurement into the, the 150s, uh, which it's a, it's a big deer. Um, 
but it, as soon as I get it back, um, because I'm getting the skull dip for him, uh, okay. he okay. wanted a, a, a American flag theme dipped on the, on That's it. But, cool. That's uh, cool. Then I'll get it. I'll get it measured just for curiosity. What What do you do with the game commission whenever you come up with something <laughs> like that? So, um, you know, I sent the picture out of of what he found, and it circulated like crazy. And then I started getting phone calls about. Um, you know you have to report that and and as long as I've been hunting I honestly did not know that was the case so I I, I, I called the game commission and told them what had happened and they sent a deputy out and um, they basically charged me ten dollars a point so um, okay that's, a, that's was, a pretty good amount there. Okay, yeah okay. yeah um, I mean there's a whole now a shed when you're shed hunting, you can keep the sheds that you find. Correct. When you've got the whole deer head, then that's a different that's a yeah. different situation. You gotta yeah. call the game they gotta call the game. Yeah, board. apparently it's a way of regulating animal parts, you know, and um, and some for somehow deterring illegal activity. Sure. Sure. Makes sense. So I was you know, I paid the hundred bucks and and he's gonna you know, we're gonna have memories and he's gonna have this on his wall forever and it was it was a cool find. So the so the way you get it clean, the the first step is you got to take a you got to take a sharp knife and just carefully without scraping the bone, but you scrape get all get all the, the tissue off, mm -hmm. um, and there's still some like some of the brains inside, some of the eyeballs are still inside, and that kind of stuff. So it maybe it, it might take you half an hour or whatever, but you carefully scrape so you're not so you don't damage damage the bone, get it scraped down as far as you can, and then the big the big thing that that really helps the most is soaking it mm -hmm. so you just get a bucket and fill the bucket with water and dip it in there and let it sit for you know a number a number of days or whatever and then my next step um i, I looked this up on i looked this up on youtube and there was like 15 different ways people were doing this mm -hmm. you know and one way is you get you you bury it in the in a compost pile right. and then the beetles chew all the tissue off you know okay. whatever and if you leave it long enough then it comes out well mine mine was kind of like this um it was like stained or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't. It, it wasn't white anymore. It was kind of like stained brown, you know. Yeah. From which I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't have left it in the compost pile that long. Maybe I left it in there too long or whatever. Um, but but you power. You, you take a power washer and you don't want to get the super heavy duty power washer like you would use on your driveway or whatever right. to clean up the concrete. So I have a plug-in one that, that I use on the shingles on the house because mm -hmm. we will sometimes get some moss on the shingles on the house. So it's kind of like half strength, you know. Right. And um, I'm going over carefully and so again, so you know the, the power washer is strong enough like the, the big one to, to break the bone, mm -hmm. you know. So you don't want to you don't want to do that. But the but the regular power washer one, um, you set the 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 how, how wide or how you know mm -hmm. so you set it to kind of a tighter you know a, a tighter mode and then you want to get that soft the soft tissue off because it kind of you know if you don't it's going to rot and stink and you yeah, know all that right. kind of stuff and it sticks around the antlers it sticks around the eye sockets or whatever and you want to make sure you kind of like go in the eye socket and go in from the back of the skull because some of the brain tissue might still be in there mm -hmm. and you know some of the thing that's the, that holds the the skin on you know all that stuff and so it maybe that's maybe a two or three or four time thing that we, and then soak it again several more days and then power wash it again and a little bit of scraping and soak it again and power wash, you know, and a little bit of scraping or whatever. Um, but it turned out great. It, yeah. it came out, it came out yeah. great. I was really, uh, I was really pleased how that turned out. Yeah, I, I agree. I had a, um, a, a chance to boil one, one time thinking I would do it myself, uh, the boiling process. And I um, thought I could do it in the house before my wife got home. Whoops. Yeah, <laughs> that's not popular. It, it, it didn't go over well because I couldn't get the odor out. It, it stunk, but it, yeah, she was low. The other part about that is too. Sometimes once you boil them, that changes the the, the strength of the bone. I mean, it makes mm -hmm. the bone a little bit weaker and to the point where they might start you know kind of falling right. apart. Um, that's w w when I do those those when I cut you know cut the piece off. I'll boil that because it's like the the back part of the skull. Mm -hmm. There aren't any like seams in there that right. you have to worry about. And then I, I make like you know kind of a round disc part, and then a round disc around the back, and then a semicircle around mm -hmm. disc. And put the two together, and then sand and grind and everything you know to get to get it all to get it all you know kind of matched up or whatever. Um, so I did boil that one because it then it was a little easier to, mm -hmm. to, to clean it off. Right. But if you're going to do a skull mount, you're going to mount the whole thing. Yeah. Um, the, the, it's interesting down, you know, kind of like near the nose and where the teeth are or whatever, that part, you know, there's different kind of cracks in mm -hmm. the, you know, in the, in the skull there that, that it can come apart there, right. you know, if, if you boil it and you, you've cooked the, bu you know, you've cooked the bone, it made it, it makes it different, you know, mm -hmm. it makes it, makes it more fragile, I think. Right. So, and then the other part is, is like, okay, well then, you know, 
am I gonna am I gonna paint it? Am I gonna get a you know a decal or whatever? And you've decided to get a, he, your son wants to get a decal. Yeah, he he um he saw it somewhere where uh, there was like a um, American flag type theme or or paint. He thought it was paint, and I said it's actually a film, and I, I knew somebody at. Um, uh, that does it, so uh, that's what we did. We're waiting on. on well, it. I brought I brought this one that, that I had worked on a couple years ago, and um, I wanted to I wanted to show I wanted to show this if we can get up close with this. Um, I I so I did all the same kind of cleaning mm -hmm. that, that we did with yours, and then put masking tape um, all around the antlers, and then just kind of covered them with plastic, and then I took spray paint. Acrylic spray paint, as opposed to regular like hardware spray mm -hmm. paint, but acrylic spray paint that you get that at the art store r rather than on right. the hardware store. And then while it's still damp, then just kind of dab it with. I mean, now this one was bronze. You can get copper. You mm -hmm. can get gold. You can get silver. You can get any other color you want. You know, kind of dab. The the coolest part is like right around you know th these places and like around the teeth and everything. You, you get you get the you know you get the met metallic right. on the out. You know, and then and then the you know the the, the, lines the dark part the you know really shows up in it. And this everybody that's that comes awesome. to my house sees us and I say, yeah. "Oh, that is really yeah. cool. How'd you do that?" You know, so that's that's you know one of my one of my favorite stories. Cool. I like I like that little zigzag yeah. or on, yep. right on the center of the skull there. Um, same thing. It's like you just kind of dab it with a little paintbrush, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, with that metallic paint on, and it turned out like that. So very nice. Then the other the other option is to is to do that that decal mm -hmm. thing, and it's like you, you the, the decal can like floats you know floats in, and then you, you dip it in and you know you kind of pick it out and yeah that's that's getting real popular i know um my buddy chris at keystone hydrographics he can't keep up with it you know he's still dipping skulls from uh you know archery and and rifle this past year so then the 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 last part maybe this is the inter most interesting part is this little place right here is where the is where the neck bone you know kind of connects mm -hmm. to the skull and so that's the strongest piece of bone so you drill a little hole and you can put just a little loop loop there if you're hanging it on the wall and, and i see people other people they might like they make like a little triangle thing so it sticks away right. and you put it on a plaque yep. and you know that so that's that's an option too but I, i've just hung this one on, on the wall mm -hmm. and um that's worked out real well so you just take you just take the the drill bit set and you get the measure up the drill bit with those little screws that mm -hmm. come with the that come with a little kit here and just want one that's just a hair smaller you yeah. know um, and then drill through that that stronger stronger mm -hmm. piece of bone right there and attach it and then then you're good to and you're good for that to hang on yeah, the, the one the ones I've been getting they're metal plates I get from Amazon and you can get like five of them for a couple bucks seven eight dollars and they actually use this existing it goes hole. in that goes down mm -hmm. the down yeah. the, the spine yep, hole there right. okay okay so anyways so I, I think this is a great way to mount the yeah. mount the head. I think that's Very a fun, cool. really fun Very way. Cool. I I rather have those anymore. Um, I think they look really nice, tasteful on the wall when you got a bunch of them too. Instead of just having a bunch of um, expensive shoulder mounts. Take it but. take it to the taxidermist, and you're going to mm -hmm. spend five hundred bucks oh, on yeah, like absolutely. that. And and it's nice, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I have a couple of those on on my wall. And it's like w when this one came along, it's like. It wasn't quite as nice as the other ones, you know. Yeah. The other ones, it's like oh, I'm gonna try something else, you yeah. know. And so I would really please. So, so I th down the road, I think I'm gonna do do more of this. Hopefully, yeah. I can find some more bucks down the road yeah, um, if I'm lucky enough here. So, all right. So, what do you think for down the road? You guys gonna keep going shed hunting? Yeah. You gonna go, go real deer hunting and um, all the rest of it? Yeah, like I said, I can't keep. Him out of the woods, and that's not a bad thing, obviously. Um, now you say he's 11. He's 11, like the, um, who's it, Trace Adkins. I think he has a song called Just Fishing with his daughter, and, you know, she thinks we're just fishing, and, you know, in his eyes, they're spending great quality time together, and, you know, he's got memories for a long time, and uh, she thinks we're just fishing. So he's, you know, when I go out with him, I just, you know, I'm trying to slow down how quickly, you know, time's going and, you know, really um, enjoy, you know, that quality time, you know, and he thinks we're just shed hunting. So <laughs> uh, I really enjoy th that time with him and it's fun and he, he doesn't get discouraged and he doesn't have patience for anything else when it, but hunting and shed hunting, you know, like he just, you can get him out there and it doesn't matter if he uh, walks four hours and doesn't find anything. Uh, he just wants to keep going and go out the next day and, um, it's, it's, it's a great thing, to, especially to get, uh, to see a, a, a young boy or, you know, kids out, just outdoors, you know, so 
Boy, I'm with you on that one. I, I'm a big fan of getting people outdoors and getting them, get, and, and whatever it is to do yeah. outside. But, you know, just, just something that's, that's going to, just uh, sitting around, you know, clicking away mm-hmm. at your, you know, whatever. Yeah. That, I, nothing wrong with that, you right. know. But that, that, to me, it's get outdoors, you know. Yeah. Get outdoors and do some stuff. I think that's a, I think that's a wonderful thing. I uh, was just thrilled to take my my uh, my oldest daughter. She was interested in outdoor stuff, and I mm-hmm. took her hunting. And she got several deer when she was in that you know twelve to sixteen year old right. range. And then and of course school sports and everything came along, and that kind of messed up you know all of the seasons yeah. going forward, and then off to college and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Um, but still, she's still a big outdoors fan. Right. And, and now she's married, and her husband's now become you know he's he's coming down from New York. He's coming down to he's got an out of state license, and he's coming down to go hunting with me yeah. and all that. So. So um, I'm real pleased how that's you know how how that's gone. Yeah, Good. get get outdoors. That's what that's my that's my thing too. That's Absolutely. My thing too. Okay. Well, Chef Lisa is going to come up with a nice venison recipe for us. So so yep. Yeah, so nice. make a, make a skull mount. Go find some sheds, <laughs> um, and then make some venison recipes here. So so stay tuned for that. And joining us now, Chef Lisa Lisa Beck. So Lisa, deer hunting. Yeah, the, the entire focus isn't always on the mounting the trophy or whatever but yeah. when you come up with something like this I oh. mean, that, that that does make that does make a special but really beautiful almost and this is I, i've been deer hunting for 43 years i think something like that mm-hmm. and i think i've gotten nine bucks something like that right so i'm all about the food part right, right. I, this is fun to hang this on the wall it, it is beautiful to have a trophy but when you don't have to go to the store or go to the butcher and buy beef because your freezer is full, such as ours, <laughs> Yay. Um, it's a good thing, and especially in these times. Meat's expensive. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah so it's... to not have to do that is a great thing for us, especially. And, and if you like it, I mean, and not everybody likes it. And when you come up with one it. nice big one like that, um, well, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, meat on on a big one like that. Yeah, yeah, there is. I mean, that's. Well, that, not not the norm. <laughs> we'll say that's not the norm. Beautiful though, absolutely beautiful. So, what was your idea for today's recipe? So, this is a family fave. Uh, you know, sometimes on the show we try something new for the first time. Uh, this is not new. May, I've made this a few times. It's called Mongolian beef, but we're doing Mongolian venison. Yay! Yeah, so it has an Asian <laughs> flair. and it's a very simple recipe. I have already cooked um, some. I do whole grain. Uh, uh, linguine pasta. Okay. So that's ready to go, which it's cooked. All we have to do is add it to it at the end. We've got our grill pan go or our, uh, our pan going. It's nice and hot. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a pound of ground venison. And as everybody knows, because they've heard us talk about it, we do half and half. So it's half really lean beef and half venison. Okay. It, it sometimes if you don't like venison, especially the burger, that's a good thing to do because it for those people who are not you know, all into it, it makes it more doable for them. So, um, so I'm going to have you, yeah, uh, do this. So we're going to put this pound in there. My expertise. Your oh, that's and I, right. And I am using this right-handedly. We'll let them think it is what it is. Okay. Even though it's a left-handed tool, I'm using okay. it right-handedly. All right. So we'll let that get going. I don't know if that. I didn't know if that one would be better than the spoon, but I gave you both. Whatever's easier, and. While you're doing that, Dwayne, I'm going to bring over here some garlic, because, and we're not going to put it in just yet, because okay. garlic tends to burn, so oh. we don't want to do that okay. um, right away. We have, you can do anywhere from three to six garlic cloves. Okay. I do three, and they were large, and you can mince them. I put them through a, um, one of those little garlic presses, and then about three to four good teaspoons of ginger. I didn't have any raw ginger, well, the kind that you would shave the actual root. Okay. So you can buy it in a prepackaged uh, little tube. So that's what we have here. So we'll give that about a minute. Once you get it all broken up, we'll add that to it. And you know, we've talked about this so many times because we've done a lot of venison recipes. The pan doesn't have oil in it, so you don't have to drain it. Um, it's a good thing. I mean, if you're going to eat red meat, you know, this is a healthier version. Okay. Um, and there's never really any oil in the pan. Sometimes we have to have a little extra liquid. Um, and one thing that I do when I'm making pasta recipes, and I did it today, is I save a good cup of the pasta water. Oh, okay. And especially with this one, because you could use cornstarch. I won't because we're adding it to pasta. But if you did it over rice and you wanted a little bit more starchy, uh, I guess rice would do it for you as well, but you could always add some cornstarch to water and thicken it up. But I also save that that reserve about a cup of 
the pasta water so that if we need more liquid or we need to thicken it up, we have that. Okay. Okay. So I am going to, it looks like that's really this going well. Brown. There's a little yeah. bit of pink still, but, yeah, but it's, it's going. brown really quickly. So we're going to add the garlic to that and we want to get that all mixed up in it. So keep stirring. Keep okay. stirring. And you're going to start smelling that aroma that wow. we love. Yes. I mean, I Instantly. love the smell of these um, types of herbs. So we've got garlic and now we have the ginger in there. It's going to really be aromatic there for us. And Dwayne, while you're doing that and you're getting it all mixed up, I'm going to mix some other ingredients okay. together in this bowl. So what I'm going to do is take a half a cup of low sodium. I always use low sodium because some of the other ingredients have it in it and you just don't need all that extra. Um, so anything low sodium I can get my hands on. So this is a half a cup of low sodium soy sauce. So we'll add that in the bowl. We're going to add um, about a half to a cup. I'm going to use, probably go, I'm going to save it in case we need it. About a half a cup of beef broth. Okay. And then this is, oh, I think I'm saying it right, it's called hosin sauce. And it's an Asian, uh, thicker type of a soy teriyaki type sauce. This is about four tablespoons. So we're going to put that in there. And I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of brown sugar. It's a sweet and sour okay. type thing. And I have about a half a teaspoon of black pepper and about a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. So wow. it gives it a little kick. Okay. And I'm going to mix that up. So we want to get that brown sugar to break down there. Get it all mixed in. This is about 90% brown here. Yeah, yeah. So this get it. It's going quickly. Yeah, once you get that really, really good, we'll add this into it, let it cook in it. I have my reserve starchy water if we need it. Okay. And I'm going to bring my noodles over because we will add those in too. You know, Lisa, you and I had this conversation before. I don't think we had it on the show, but this. This particular, the way the economy is going right now, trying to go out and buy groceries and buy meat or whatever, it's just crazy. It is crazy. With the, with the price of it is. I'm really happy to bring home some venison because yeah. that's. Um, it, it probably is bringing you back to the days when you were in college and you were needing to go out to kill a rabbit. Struggling. So, so yeah, that you struggling could to get some food. Have yes, dinner right. on the table. You know, <laughs> back in the old days, oops, not not too old, but. Um, yeah, I mean, really, if you can ha provide your family with a meal like this, I mean. <laughs> we didn't buy that in the store. Now, granted, we did add some beef to it, but if we're going to do a backstrap, you know, on the grill or any of any of the roasts that my husband got out of the deer, we're not going to buy that at a store. We're going to have it in our freezer, and there's something to be said for that, especially in this day and age. I mean, I mean, I've, I've been going to the store, and sometimes everything's fine. Other times, it's like half the shelves are empty. Everything, there's, there's yeah. Just nothing, it, nothing to buy there. Yeah, it's hit or miss. Okay, so I'm going to add this in there. We are, we're almost done. It's looking good. It smells it's great. Really, it smells wonderful. I mean, and that's another thing about cooking venison. If you're going to add things into it, the, the spices and things like that, it's going to take away any of the gamey taste that's going to be there, you know, initially. So we're going to add the sauce. I'm going to turn it down just a little, and then we'll mix that in there. And it did quiet down a little bit, but it will heat back up. We'll let it, we'll bring it up in temperature and then we'll add the noodles. And then if we need any thickening, we'll use, or any more liquid, we'll add um, the starchy water. Okay. But um, I don't know that, well, we may need a little, we'll see. We just don't want it to cook too long that it's okay. gonna all evaporate. Well, that's true. We were making venison chili the other day and it does, it's steam, 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 steam. Right, and, yeah. right, and you lose some of that liquid. I always make it a point to kind of rinse out the, the bean cans and put a little bit of that water in, in right. you know, because that does kind of steam right. away. And, right. Yeah. And when I put the noodles in, because we're using a smaller container, I'm not going to put a whole pound of noodles in there, but that's what the recipe calls for. So just so our viewers know that, um, we want them to be able to see what it looks like. We don't want it to go over the side of the pan uh, <laughs> because, you know, we, we tend to have those bloopers now and then on the show. So I'll be careful about how many I put in there. Um, but you, you would typically use a whole box of linguine and you can use any kind of pasta. It doesn't really matter, but that's what this particular recipe calls for. So, so we're bringing up the tap. That's good. This is browned really nicely and back yeah. to a little bit of a boil here. Yep. So we're going to get put 
put some of this in there and get it mixed in with the meat and the liquid. Obviously, everybody knows how to get the pasta ready. That's a That's the pretty, easy. Simple, pretty simple task. That's the easy task, yeah. Just bring it to a boil and set a timer. So we'll do one more spoonful, and that should be good. Whoop! Got a runaway noodle there. A jumper. A jumper. Doesn't that look nice? Oh. Actually, I think I can put a little bit more in there. I don't think it's going to take up too much space. I was a little worried it would be over the top, but I'm not as worried. We just want to make sure that the noodles get the liquid. Um, I am going to add just a little bit of starchy liquid to it, just a little. And just make sure you get it mixed up well. And then I have a couple toppings, but we'll wait a minute and we'll, while you're doing that, I'll get us prepared to taste. Okay. Always our favorite part, of course. Uh, my, my, uh, I, the guys I go hunting with, whenever I see them, the first thing they want to talk about is all your recipes. They never want to talk about how great the show was. Or they just want to talk about Lisa's recipes. Well, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. That's really sweet of you. Yeah, so you just want to make sure that they get part of the liquid, they get mixed in with the meat, and that you let it go for about three minutes so that everything's warm and, you know, um, the flavors mix, and then we're going to be ready to taste. That you could even, beautiful. yeah, you could even put a lid on it, let it go a little bit, but we won't do that today. I'm just thinking as I'm looking at this, you could even add some snow, sugar snap peas at the at last minute. <laughs> I mean, you could really, you could doctor this up if you wanted to. What this is think? one of those creative ones. That's where you can be creative. Just like I always tell everyone, you don't have to use venison. You can use beef interchangeably in any of these recipes that we do. Okay, I'm gonna garnish. What do you think? Yeah, All sure. right. So I have some, I had see, uh, sesame seeds and I put them in a little hmm. uh, pan on like medium and I toasted them. So we're gonna look how, you're gonna wait till you see how pretty this is gonna look. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna turn it down, whoops. So we're gonna add some toasted sesame seeds okay and then some chopped green onions give it a little color and we didn't use that other spoon right that's not been used correct. okay so we'll use that to serve i knew i brought it down for a reason look at that what do you think wow doesn't that look good i think everybody can see that that's that really awesome. simple a one skillet meal i mean people are always looking for those kinds of things actually we can use this this will be easier probably to get the pasta I didn't out look, i didn't look at my watch but that was maybe 10 minutes maybe to maybe. do that maybe 12 something maybe. like that look wow. at that that is awesome and you do see there's some liquid in there we didn't run out of liquid steamy here you go all right. Smells really good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nice oh, little. Lisa, that's wonderful. Nice little Asian dish. Thank mm, you. That's yeah. awesome. I really like this one. That, like I said, it's a people pleaser. My family likes it. Mm. It seems like this is everybody's favorite part of the show, including me. And including me too. Me. And me too. I love it. It's always the best time. Well, Lisa, thank you very much for You're the awesome welcome. recipe. I'm so glad to do it. And thank you for the folks at home joining us for Crawford County Outdoors. And we will talk to you next time. And I'm finishing my... Me too. I'm finishing my treat here. Yes.